Today we have something special planned. Shut up. Originally, it was going to be two of my very close friends, but unfortunately, one decided to not show up. We have James Harris in the hot seat. Both of them know how to put together some of the greatest deals in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, only one is here to tell us about it. So, Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles, David Parnes not in the house, James Harris is. I don't think either of them need an introduction, because this dynamic duo has been on the show since season seven. Both David and James left their careers and moved from London to Los Angeles in 2009 and started their real estate business together. Probably a mistake. Without any contacts, they worked their way up to where they are today, revered as two of the most trusted real estate agents in Los Angeles. I didn't write this bullshit. If you haven't seen them on the Million Dollar Listing show, get ready. They have two of the most charming accents and award-winning personalities. I'm so excited to welcome only one of you. Well, thank you, Joshua Flagg. I would love to know who wrote that script for Obviously you. Obviously not me. Because I don't think in 10 years you've spoken that highly of me, but thank you so much. What an introduction. Okay. I think we should start from the top. Spoken Again. that highly of anybody, actually. <laughs> so basically I'm sitting here with this asshole and this, that would be we I. couldn't fill the spot with anybody else. We wanted Josh Altman, but you know, he requested too much money. So we stuck James here because he would do it for free. <laughs> I got a good fee. Yeah. Um, I Let's get comfortable. You get comfortable. You haven't changed your socks in about three weeks. Could That's you not get... true, but I did wear this thing last night. <laughs> yeah, I know you did because I saw you. I know, right? So I can vouch for you. All right. So, James, tell me what you think of Josh Altman. I mean, look, Josh Altman is... I'll give him one good piece of... You're going to give I'll, him one compliment? I'll give him a compliment. He works hard. He works hard. Our styles could not be more different. And that's what makes the world go round. How about that? That's diplomatically correct. So basically correct. you're saying he's a piece of shit. Basically. Okay. And how do you think our styles are different, you and me? Or are they similar? Well, you're a trust fund baby. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't get anything till my parents are dead. I know, but you're you're milking it for what it is. I can tell you um, I can get. And you know something? I'll tell you what I've learned about you, Mr. Flagg. You're born and raised in Beverly Hills. You know Beverly Hills at the back of your hand. You know every single piece of information about every single property that I will never know. You are a wealth of information. You're an 84-year-old Jewish grandmother, and you own it. I and, just celebrated my 85th birthday. And you own it. And I have to say, I do give you the utmost respect for that because you know your shit. People respect it. Your group of friends average of an age of around 80 to 90 years old. Uh -huh. And... It's actually going up older. You're waiting for them to they're pop dying. off. They're, drop, they're dropping, so <laughs> it's going up actually every day. <laughs> But you know your niche and you're really good at it. And you're a fucking character. Now tell me something nice about me. You have a great husband mm -hmm. who has one of the muscliest asses I've ever felt. Mm, so juicy. And joking aside, you have a heart of gold. Mm. You're a good boy. You're a great friend. Got a lovely family. I'd fuck you over in a deal in a second. And we all know you'd fuck me over in a deal in a hot second. Hot and second. But at least I'm like honest. That's why we don't tell you anything. Right. But and, we know it. But you shouldn't tell me either, because I would totally just fuck you over royally. The good news is I'd fuck you go, over too, don't so go, <laughs> don't worry don't about it. I was going to say, like, let's be real, huh? I'm just more vocal about well, it. Absolutely. I'd do it just David probably wouldn't, though, because he's too dumb. Uh, I wouldn't say dumb. Maybe smart. He mm -hmm. just has integrity. I'd fuck you over. Yeah, he's got integrity. I'd fuck you over, and then I'd tell you about it once we'd close. Close the deal. Absolutely. Good. Because, cause, <laughs> and the reason why is because you know that I'd then I'd kill it in the middle of the deal. Well, I'd of somehow course. spoil it. Of course. Right. And I couldn't allow that to happen. No, you couldn't. So if I'm going to fuck you over, it would have that to... would be morally wrong for me to tell him that so he can fuck me. Let's talk about how ethical, wonderful, fabulous we are, not how we want to fuck each other over. How about that? We don't have much to talk about. Fair enough. Podcast over. So tell me, uh, how did you get to this country? <laughs> Clearly on a plane, but like, what... what... <laughs> Did you like what's the story here? I left school very early. You got kicked out clearly. Eight schools. Uh huh. Came here at uh, left school at sixteen. Started in real estate and uh, at twenty one moved to Los Angeles. My father lived here at the time. And what was he doing? He was running a business. 
How's that working out? Not so hot. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> fell in love, stayed, and Dave and I set up our business. <laughs> How's that working out for him? Not so hot. Not so well. Should ask him. Yeah, I've, been, I've, yeah. I've probably said we're not yeah, doing yeah, so well. Yeah. <laughs> probably not. How's he's your dad's kind of business? Guy. Well, he's retired. Is he? Yeah. Must be bored out of his mind having to deal with your ass he every has day. Penny, the Can you imagine Penny the poodle? That poor he, Penny. When that dog goes, it's going to be. <laughs> Devastating. It's devastating. Dev He'll probably be no. more upset about when Penny goes. No, 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 no. I mean, it's going to be devastating, not for him. Oh, right. For me, Penny is going to be a very How rich poodle. How much time in a 24-hour day do you think about your inheritance? Uh, all the time. <laughs> like more or less than 12 hours a day? More. Uh, for sure, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's an exciting moment. It really is. It's going to be an exciting moment, <laughs> you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Josh, you are a one of a kind. There's no question. Okay, so you come over here on the Queen Mary. On the Queen Mary, first yeah. class, of course. QE2 or the... No, just the Queen Mary. Just the Queen Mary. Yeah, All yeah. Right. First class. Direct trip. And uh, I was thinking you were going to be in Titanic down on the... We the, set up our real estate business gallery. seven years ago, and uh, the rest is history. That's a lame. You have to, we have to fill time here. You need more... No, you keep asking questions. You're doing a great okay. job. Tell me what your experience was like when you got off the boat. So when I got off the boat and I saw <laughs> it's like sunny, in the 1800s, there's like southern. men, on, like men on the, the boardwalk and women with parasails on, like walking like by. I didn't arrive on the Titanic. No one did. <laughs> sadly, no one did. Um, <laughs> we're not laughing about that no right now. Did. Okay, I uh, arrived here on a Virgin Atlantic airplane. <laughs> Um, it was a very special moment. That was the first funny thing you've ever said. Oh, really? Yeah. You've yet to say something funny. So you get off the QE2 and you're walking around yep. like Oliver Twist. You're looking for food. Yep. You're, it's like, you know, it's early morning. Like yep. the steam is coming out of the train and yep. there's fog on the thing. And you're walking to those men in hats and whatever. Can you spare some porridge, sir? It's yep. cold outside. Yeah. Maybe just some soup yeah it's so cold oh, look you're shaking so cold don't know if those are actual shakes or... okay and then <laughs> and then the first place obviously you go is like a strip club strip club dog. obviously obviously Come that's on. the first like, place you go without saying and um what's your first job my first job is trading commodities well i know but the people don't know and you worked for one of my best friends who's that yes i did stephen lip no kevin lipton yeah that's absolutely correct who's the stephen lipton I don't know it's <laughs> kevin's brother i'm sure I there's assume. a stephen lipton he might be listening <laughs> Kevin, Hope so. Yeah, so Kevin, and apparently, according to Kevin, you guys would have made it killing in the gold business. But I, truly, yes, but I had a passion in real estate, as did David. So then we set our business up, and we looked up to the, the likes of you, Josh. Then we got to know you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the rest is history. So, yeah, let's talk about your family. Do you like your kids? I love which my one kids. do you like more? There's always a favorite. Let's just be really honest, it's right? Definitely. You don't even remember their names, do you? No, I'm trying to remember which one's which. She <laughs> is mean. Your daughter is mean. By the way, she's like six. Oh my god, she's so, mean. I have she's a ten-year-old. So mean to me. What did she say? Like, I can't remember. She basically said, "I'm." trash and she wouldn't shouldn't touch me like to take it out the trash she might no i don't God, know that's why that's i horrible. love that. Do you remember what she said it was we filmed it it was it great was superb. That i would good. roast you but my mum said i'm not allowed to burn trash oh, if that gosh. isn't a comeback from a 10 year old Amazing. i don't know what is Ugh, fabulous angry little child fabulous anyway so you yes. like one of them more clearly. no i don't i love them both dearly and they're the best thing that ever happened to me not and to really me. you should have a child because i think it would change your life and i mean that I think somewhere really uh, deep down, you'd grow to love that kid. Really, really, it really take, deep. It would take a hot minute. It would take it a while. It would take a hot minute. Well, Bobby says I can have a five-year break, like not change the diapers, not do anything, and like really? literally just so do whatever I want. what are you waiting for? Come well, on. Because the kid is going to like Bobby and not me. If I will come into his life five years later. Does Penny like you, the poodle? Penny does kind of so like you. So you've me. earned Penny's trust. You could earn a little baby's trust. You just have to be nice and kind. And open up and be, you know, be yourself. I think the kid would learn to love you. I think you should try it. I would be a good dad, though. I'm too self. So the house you're building, you've been building for nine years. Uh -huh. You've got probably another six years to go. I think by the time the house is built, you should <laughs> plan. <laughs> decorate the, the nursery. Yes. Right. Have you got a bedroom in there for the nursery? Um, by the time the house is done, let's think. So I start decorating the nursery now. Yeah. 
two years. Pro yeah, I guess. Uh, Flag, let's talk seriously. When's the house going to be finished? Next administration. No, know. but really, well, that's coming up. So that's okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's coming up real <laughs> soon. November, great. <laughs> no, I meant like he, he gets impeached. It's coming up like, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, shit. That's also true. <laughs> that's a possibility. Yeah. So when's the house finished? May. Fantastic. Is that a 2021. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about um, India Rose. Oh, that's not your kid. That's the one. Uh, I'm still thinking about this nursery thing. So if I'm building the house. Yes. Actually, the house, the kid's going to come first. We won't have a nursery. Right. Yeah. We're going to have to have the kid before we start decorating the nursery. Flag oh, definitely will you let Valeria be my child's mother? Absolutely not. Why? Because <laughs> Valeria... <laughs> Is my wife, and? and if I should have another child with her, no, I mean, in and it pushes out of those places, it's going to be with my no, no, her eyes. eggs, her eggs. Oh, you want her eggs? She is rather beautiful, I must say. Are we admitting my wife's beautiful? Are you are they brown are eggs you, or white eggs? Are you paying a compliment? Are you paying a compliment to my no, wife? No, I. You mean malaria? Are you paying a compliment <laughs> to my wife? Her name is Valeria, by the way, but I call her malaria. <laughs> Look how proud he is of that. He learned to change one letter in the alphabet, yeah. and he's so fucking proud of himself. Look at that. I'm so happy. Achievement. I, she, I call by the way, shit. when I first met her, I couldn't remember her name until I thought of <laughs> malaria. So I kind of relate. I do get wait, it. Wait, hold on. Okay, so wait, Mal Mal Valeria. So yes. could she? Could I have her eggs? You probably could. Moving on. Do you like David, or is it like you're forced to work with him? I love David. Who's the who's the brains? Oh, that's a great question. I'd say we're both the brains. You're not going to get an undiplomatic answer on this subject, but we can keep going. We're both the brains. That's the diplomatic answer. Who would you say is the brains? Oh, for sure you. Not a question. Oh my God, no! I might be the least academic person I know. Well, do you need to do science for selling <laughs> real estate? I, I, <laughs> that I, is also a very I, good point. We, you do not. <laughs> yeah. So no, I would say that. He, let's see, you're definitely, I'm going to say you're definitely a better sales. Like when you're showing the, the house, doing the bullshit, whatever, I'm sure you're much more convincing. I really don't think so. Because I think you are like a, kind of. A, we have our own styles. It's different styles. And you know what? That's what makes it so successful. Meanwhile, the camera goes off and he's like, fuck that asshole. He does nothing. <laughs> well, I hate him trying to get rid of him for years. What advice do you have for new agents? Ugh, boring, real question. Not boring. Something I think it's substance. a good question. That okay. has substance. I know. That's what I'm saying. I think the best advice to new agents is to get out there, get in front of people, start learning the broker community flag. I was in this. I literally tuned out. And I honestly think if you're a new <laughs> broker coming into the business, you need to be prepared to work hard, not give up, sit as many open houses as you can, and take life a lot more seriously than this asshole on my left. Because... You can't all get given it on a silver fucking platter. <laughs> but you should. <laughs> but if you do, but if it you could do, also it's great. work out. <laughs> silver spoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you do, it it's works great. for some. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Now. Oh, God. Is this an Aston Martin you got? Yeah. Flash bastard. Look at that. Don't you remember? You wanted it? I did want it, actually. And so I went out and got it. I know, I know, you really did. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> At least he owns it. He, yeah, you own He's it. He's like, God, I really, really want this car. And then I really tortured him. I said, okay, maybe I'll take over your lease and I'll take the then Tesla. Then you fucked my, you <laughs> fucked it for then me. I fucked him over. You didn't take over my I lease and went and got the, the car I want. And I just took the car he wanted to get. Good friend, good so, friend. So now Bobby and I have two cars. We share both of them and I have the luxury of driving either. The car that I wanted. And, and you don't. That's okay then. You you, actually, you want... Yes. Would you like to take the car today? I'll trade you. Yeah, I I'll would take actually. The, I'll take the Tesla. Done. Not happening. Deal. You said it. It's on camera. Actually, I wouldn't mind, I guess. Fuck it. Tesla's great. I really don't understand. Great. What are people so excited about it? What does it do it's that it's... fast, efficient, sexy, cool. My car's faster. My car's a hell lot sexier. Your car is not an everyday driver. It's Why? low to the ground. Who cares? It smashes on every single fucking pothole in LA, of which we have a lot of them. And... You're like an 84-year-old woman. You shouldn't be driving a cool, sexy, young car. It should be me. <laughs> <laughs> Silenced. <laughs> so we're switching today. Okay, I don't mind. Whatever. But I still, I need, the way, reason I would want to drive a Tesla is if, if the, is there a technology where I can read emails? Yes. Yes. No. Not on that car. You can hold your phone and read them whilst you're so driving. I anyway, so I hit so many people. It's amazing. <laughs> Auto it is auto drive. We do have auto drive on the Tesla. The Aston does not have that. 
Yeah, you have to go one direction. <laughs> this is true. Great. <laughs> so I just, that. It's great when you're doing Route 66. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's the, about the only reason it's true. great. It switches lanes. It does. Lovely. Fantastic. Um, yeah. And then what I just don't understand about a Tesla is like, you, they're basically the same cost as an S class. Yet you see an S class, you're like, oh, that's a nice car. I look at it, I cannot tell the difference between the smaller model and the big model. Do you provide food here at this podcast? No, we don't have craft service. We're on a budget. <laughs> I'm starving. We can barely afford the pay the rent for the room. <laughs> Absolutely starving. Can you give us a deal hookup? Back to Jews. Um, <laughs> what do you do for the Jewish community? I actually do give back to the Jewish community. You shit. Shut up. What do you do? I actually give back to the Children's oh, yeah. Hospital of Los Angeles. I donate every year and my wife and I go and uh, yeah. volunteer as you well. You do, really? Yes, I really do. Oh. I'm sorry. Should we have lunch after this? I have a three o'clock. What's your point? One forty-five right now. With who? Uh, just a meeting. What's the client's name? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, Definitely no. not telling I you. I literally go and I'm like, I put like a, a tracking device underneath oh, the Tesla. I, I do love you, Flag. You are a one of a kind character. There's would no you say that I'm your best that. friend? I would say you're one of my best friends. Who are your, who are your three we're, best we're, friends? We're not doing that right now. Why? Because but you're up there. You're definitely up there. I would say you're, you're one of my two best friends. Oh, who's the other one? I don't know. Go I just on. didn't want to say you're my best friend. So who's I had... the other one? <laughs> it, would, it would be closest most like matt you, kornberg i was gonna well no i was gonna say i'm closest to you but matt has been my oldest friend matt used to travel with you and your grandma all exactly. around the world i've seen footage of that and that's beautiful what footage you've shown me videos of you and matt somewhere with your grandma with this big hat on that was a turban and that was in saudi arabia uh, i really wish i got to meet her she sounded like a wonderful lady she was amazing oh you know what's very interesting Did actually she put last out with night your shit? oh yeah I put up with her shit too. Oh, By really? the way, Fair she was enough. not an easy cookie. One time I actually made her cry. Wow, that's fucked One up. One and all. I know, that's really fucked that's up. That's fucked up. I can honestly say I never made my grandma cry. Well, I know. that's because I never saw her, to be she fair. She was but... tough, but she was really tough on me one day and I made her cry. And then I was like, oh my fuck, I just made a nine <laughs> year old woman cry. I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh, good. Did you finally feel bad? I actually, you know, I, yeah, I came out of the car. I said, I'm so sorry. I love you. And she goes, I love you too. Oh, she did love you. And then she said, she's taking me out of the will. Oh, and then you cried <laughs> for a long time. Well, we got a fist fight. And then she said she's joking. We got and... a fist fight. Yeah, I bet. Interview me. When did you come out the closet? Uh, I came out when I was 17. And did you tell your dad first, your mom first? I told my dad, my mom. And when I told my dad, that was, that was a really strange because he goes, okay, are you sure? And he right. goes, yeah. And, I, and he goes, you know, I thought I was too when I was younger, maybe. It could oh. be just a thing. Oh, he was, yeah, he thought it was a thing. And then he realized you like ballet. But and he like... does love women's shoes, my dad. So I am. A... Maybe he's a little cross dressing. No, I mean, he will, goes with my mom, loves. Oh, he for loves shoes. to go buy shoes. Maybe he just never came out. I don't know. I, I mean, he loves, you know, very gay things. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, your mom? She didn't come out of the closet. She didn't come out of the closet. What do you think about the bird streets? I like the bird streets. I think they're hot right now. I think the bird kind of going down. Really? Mm, Well, we just saw one buyer close on two houses for seventy-six million dollars. Robin Drive. I know. The end of the cul-de-sac. I know the guy who owns the one next door, or did. So yeah, well, that was one of the sales. How do you have a suntan, by the way? Seriously. How do I? You have a little bit of a tan. Is it fake? I have the lightest, I actually have the most fair skin. This is my skin color. And how did you get on the show? We were casted. They were casting like 500 agents. And... Bullshit. I called them and told them to call you guys. <laughs> Fuck, bull. I, they were looking at Money. a bunch of people. I met really? Jay David at, at the Beverly Hills Hotel, the pool. And I said, I'm going to help you out here. And I called and I said. Oh, God, did you really? Yes. That's the first I've ever heard of that. Now you need to put me on half your deals. Thank you so much. I don't even know what to tell you. I've given so it six years of our lives now. Of, uh, the revenue. You How have here. you been on this show for 13 consecutive years? Well, you have lost the plot. But I mean, seriously, that's a long time I've to do this. I've grown up on television. You actually have. Isn't that weird if you I've think about it? I've seen footage of you. I've fucking... grown up. I started at 21 on the show. I mean, arguably, you haven't grown up. No. But I understand what you mean. Actually, in I'm years. Even more immature in years, you've grown up. Uh, but it's kind of gone backwards. But yeah. There's a real crusty in my nose right now. I can see. Please stop flicking it at me. Please. Please. With coronavirus. All that. Coronavirus. I don't need No, I have shit. Ebola. Oh, God. You know something? When Ebola was about, I was at a house in Beverly Hills Post Office. And, uh, what are you talking about? Ebola was 15 years ago. No, it wasn't. It was about six years ago. No. Google it. 
And You're talking I about was a swine flu or something. No, Ebola. And I met a client at a house, and she was a day trader, an old woman, and she started pitching me on all these different stocks. And she pitched me on a medication that treated Ebola. And I liquidated all my stocks. No, I put idiot. every single penny in it. And it went up about 10 times. And I was going mad. Problem was, I forgot to liquidate. And about another thousand companies came out with the same medication. And I lost everything. you forgot? Problem is, you never back a drug that but fixes what do you mean something you that's problematic. Moving How do you on. forget to liquidate the stock? Uh, because you just don't look at it and you forget to liquidate it. Like a week later or like a year later? Oh, it was like six months later. Shit Idiot. happens. Okay, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Flag, I adore you. As Walter Cronkite used to say, and that's the news. And that is the news. And that is the news. It's been a pleasure. And that is a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for having me. <laughs> L'chaim. L'chaim. And to life. To life. Your mom. <laughs> Your mom. Your dad. Your dad's housekeeper. Your fucking poodle. Your poodle. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, folks. Bye-bye, folks.